Hey everybody, Liam here again for another Redshift quick tip. Today I'm going to tell you about how to render even faster by using progressive mode instead of bucket mode. It's really great for things like proofs or if you need to send out a concept to a client and just show them how things are generally going to look. You don't really need that polish of bucket rendering. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so I'm gonna be doing this in Houdini, as I said in the intro, just what I've been working in lately, but the same theory applies no matter which 3D application you're using. Maya, Cinema 4D, Houdini, doesn't matter. So let me just go ahead and hit play on the render view so I can tell you what we're doing. So if I hit play here, and this loads up, you'll see that it does a really quick progressive render. It's just kind of like a little snapshot. And most of the time when you're rendering in your final frames, you wanna do bucket rendering. So you really get that nice motion blur and those details. So I went ahead and hit this and turned on bucket rendering. See, I got some motion blur in there, a little bit more detail in the particles. Just do one more compare and contrast. Here's that one. And then here's this with bucket rendering. And you can see with progressive, because in my settings, I've set it pretty low that it's really fast. Now you lose some detail, you lose motion blur and things like that, but it really starts to add up when you wanna send something out as a proof to a client, or uh, maybe you just need to figure out your timing a little bit better if you've already set up your scene and your creative director comes to you and says, all right, this is still moving a little too fast, it's still moving a little too slow, and you don't wanna go through and render out a final proof. So, um, to do a little compare and contrast, I've set up this render, and right now I'm gonna leave it on Unified Sampling, also known as Buckets, and just show you how quickly the time starts to compound on this. So if I hit render right here, we'll watch this, and we'll probably go to like frame 30 or so, and just see how quickly the time adds up. So right now we're doing about a second of frame, and that's not terrible. You can see up here how long it's taking. Um, actually, we're not even at a second yet. There we go, now we're at a second. And in a few more frames, we're already going to be jumping up to about two seconds, three seconds a frame. And that starts to add up really quickly. So for a proof, when you want to have something done in maybe like 120 seconds or like 240 seconds, just a couple minutes, you know, waiting around for buckets isn't that fun. So just a few more frames and you'll see, you know, it's starting to drag already. We're at two seconds. I think we actually just hit three seconds. If I look again, one, two, three. So we're at frame 18 and already hitting three seconds. So, you know, when this gets up to about a million particles or so, then that's all, all those buckets have to calculate that and it's gonna add up even more. Now we're up to four seconds. I really want to get to frame 30 just to do a great compare and contrast. Um, especially since for this scene, I, I hit a million particles right around 24 frames. So that will really start to pull on redshift and the render speed. So still at four seconds. I think we're going to hit about five. For almost five. All right, so I'm gonna call that good enough. We hit frame 24, that's where a million is. And now I can watch it and see it playback. That's great, but that took a while, you know, that that could be time well spent somewhere else. So let's kill this. And back in the setting, settings, uh, wherever you're working in whatever 3D app, you're just gonna be going into your sampling options and you wanna check progressive rendering. So if we turn progressive rendering on and do 128, I'm gonna show you again in the render view that you'll see this progress bar, it'll start to clean it up and you'll get your motion blur and everything. But then we're waiting again, I'm waiting, waiting, I'm waiting. And so, all right, finally cleaned up. A lot like how Octane works. It takes a snapshot of the whole scene and then starts to progress towards your final render. But for preview purposes, we only need to set it to like 16, maybe maybe eight or four. 16 was pretty fast. Let's try four. So four, according to this, is 2.48 seconds at this scene. Um, I've been testing this before I started recording and it's still gonna be 
under a second. So let's go ahead, we've got this enabled and we'll hit render again and you'll see how fast it takes these snapshots just so you can get a preview of how stuff is moving. You can do proofs a lot easier. So not even a full second here. We're already at frame eight. By this point, I think we were at hitting about one second of frame. I know around frame 15, we were almost at three seconds of frame and we're still not even hitting a second yet. Still going. And I think we're about to hit a second of frame, almost. We might not even hit a second of frame by the time we get to frame 24. I thought we did but when I was doing my tests, but it doesn't seem like it. Now, of course, like it's got to load the objects and particles and all that. That counts towards your render time, like your overall render time. Um, but actual render time for the frame still hasn't even hit a second yet, and we're at 30 seconds. So if I go ahead and interrupt this, just help to stop, hit playback, you'll see like we have a little bit of motion blur in there. It's not great, but this is fine for doing a proof. Uh, internally you're sending off to a client too just to get a general idea of how things are looking and moving and you're not spending that much time on it if you have something like deadline hooked up or you're sending it out to a render farm you could get this back especially like a complex scene in like a minute two minutes um, so just keep that in mind if you're working and you want to see something that's a little bit higher detail than just like your viewport in here where it's like, all right, those are just particles or whatever you're working on. Um, you can set your, your settings to progressive rendering with some really low passes and get something out really fast. So that's it for this one. As I said, it doesn't really matter what 3D application you're using. These settings go across from Houdini to Cinema 4D to Maya and every other uh, application that Redshift is on. As always, if you have questions, go ahead and comment below. You can find me pretty much anywhere at 531 and Liam at 531 if you want to email me. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.